filters are really a cheap investment. Uh, the price of a filter, which I don't know what they are, I will do short and I've got one with my skin loader. But anyways, that is pretty cheap compared to replacing those components way in front. You're, you're looking at several thousand dollars if you have to go into that and fix it. The filter is in there to catch the material and stuff. All right, a couple things you can look at on filters. You know, you say, well, I can go down here to the auto parts store and I go somewhere else and they, they'll tell me they'll sell me filters. Okay. Filters can vary. The amount of paper that's inside them, the amount of fleets that are in, or fleets that are inside here. Also, if you can pull the specs up on a filter, you'd see that it has a micron rating. How many, what size microns material does it take out of the system? Also, a flow rating. It'll take out so much of the contaminants every time the oil passes through it. Okay. And on your skid loaders, you're passing oil through here a lot. Let's just say you have 20 gallons per minute. Um, actually, I'm not sure what the reservoir is on this one. The older reservoirs are like between 5 and 8 gallons per minute. They're 5 to 8 gallon reservoirs. That's all the oil they held. Now, if you go back to the old 555s and stuff, they held 15 to 20 gallons. But the newer ones, you don't have that amount of oil. You're circulating that oil that's going through the cooler and stuff to keep it clean, to keep it, or excuse me, to keep it cool. They have the filter there to keep it clean. I always felt a lot better, of course, you know, like I said, I did work for New Holland, so they, they sent me a paycheck every couple of weeks, so I was very loyal to them, but still, when I buy filters for my own equipment and stuff, I go back to the dealer or the original equipment filter to get it, because I know it's, it's okay and it's good for that piece of equipment. Now, you may go up here and buy some filters, and a lot of the filters they sell are fleet guard filters, okay? Fleet Guard is an approved OEM for the company. Okay. Case in New Holland and a lot of other companies. Fleet Guard makes the filters. A lot of the original filters are Fleet Guard, but they're brand in New Holland and painted like that. But the Fleet Guard filters they sell you up front at the parts counter is an OEM approved filter. Okay. So remember that. If you want to, does anybody here ever do oil samples? Um, you, you can do that. Caterpillar does a lot of that for their big construction equipment. Every so often they pull the oil out of an engine or out of a hydraulic system, send it through their test labs and say, okay, this is what I see, this is what, what might be happening inside that engine or transmission. Okay? Um, if you have a failure and you take out an oil sample, it's going to be contaminated. It really doesn't tell you much information. The benefits of oil samples are that Okay, we start out with this piece of equipment, we know what the baseline is, okay? And actually the different types of oils too will make a difference on that. But we know where that oil's at. Next time you pull a sample, okay, it's about the same, everything looks good. Maybe a thousand or two thousand dollars down the line, okay. I'm starting to see some brass or I'm starting to see some babbit or, or some bearing material or something on the engine, okay. All right, well, it's okay, yeah, it's good at specs, but it'll let you know when you got to do an engine repair or something like that. And that's oil sampling on a regular basis. So, again, at the ag level, and small construction level, you really don't see a lot of people doing that. But, if you want to, when you change filters, all right, take, they actually make filter cutters, they look like big pipe wrenches, or take your hacksaw or grinder and cut the can off of it. Pull the filter out, you're going to have this oily mess here. Okay. You can look at the pleats and see if there's anything, big chunks in there, and really something starting to deteriorate. All right. Actually, cut the pleats out and open them up. That's a, that's a good thing to do to give a little idea of what's going on. Okay. You can do that with your engine oil filters, fuel filters, and anything else that you want to. Quick couplers are your biggest place of contaminants. All right. Make sure you keep them clean. If your attachments, one nice thing with skid steers, you got male and female couplers. All right. So when you hook an attachment, you can actually hook the hoses back together and stuff so that they don't get dirty. The other thing it does too, if the sun shines on your attachment, it can build pressure in the hoses and then you got to try to break them loose to hook them up. If you hook them together, that oil can kind of move a little bit and you got a better chance of re-hooking it up with the skid motor. That's the biggest point of contamination. If your oil ever looks foamy 
It never looks milky. That means you got water in there, and you definitely need to get it changed. If you got water in the system, you may have to change it a couple times to kind of work that water out. Okay. So that's and there's also recommended intervals to change the oil. But again, milking and the water in here. If it looks dirty, it definitely needs to be changed. Okay. Filters, I would stick with the recommended interval on filters. So if that's important, that keeps the material, poor material out of there. To me, that's almost more critical than just changing oil on a regular basis, which is still good. But change your filters on a regular basis, keep it clean. If you do have one of the older style loaders, remember there's two hydraulic filters on it. There's your main system hydraulic filter, and it's got a separate filter just for your hydrostatics. Okay? Some of them have screens on the suction side where it goes in the pump and different things. So make sure, again, this is a good place for the operator's manual. You know what your system's got for filtration. Okay? So, any questions on hydraulic filters on the engine? the same thing. Engine oil and stuff has recommended intervals. They've actually gone on larger models to 500 hours on these now, and I think this one here is 250. Again, if you're in super dirty, dusty conditions, you may want to lower those chain intervals. Okay. The other big thing with an engine is air. Okay. All of them have inner and outer elements on your air filtration systems. Okay. The inner element is a safety element. Okay. The inner element really is not meant to do any routine air cleaning. The inner element is only there that if something would happen to your outer element, this will save your engine. Okay. When you're looking at your elements and changing your elements, if this ever gets dirty, you throw in the trash can immediately and buy a new one. Also throw the outside one in because that means it wasn't sealing or it's got a hole in it. Okay. You can clean the outer elements stuff, so use air, whatever, there's different recommendations for cleaning, that's perfectly okay. And I always look at the seal area to make sure it's sealing up properly, okay, make sure it's got a good seal on it. Look at the can, you know, take a little flashlight or something, look at the can and see if you see. If you have a leak somewhere, it'll be a real clean area. If dirt's getting by somewhere, it'll actually polish it up, it'll clean it, just like sandblast and stuff, it'll go by. And don't forget about checking your hoses and clamps and stuff from the air cleaner back to the engine, okay? Make sure everything's tight. Make sure your hoses, the spin loader, has a lot of stuff jammed in the back, okay? And sometimes those hoses, if they get moved or something happens, your hose will rub against something. They can get a hole in it, okay? And we know what happens if you get a hole in your hose. You uh, come in here and you buy a new engine for trade units. It's pretty expensive, so... Take good care of your air filtration systems. Very important to the engine. Okay. Antifreeze. Okay. Antifreeze, if you just check it for freezing, it'll last a really long time. Okay. The other thing to remember about antifreeze, it actually has additives in it for different things. Every couple, three years, it's good to replace the antifreeze. Okay. Replace the antifreeze, put fresh in. As far as checking it to make sure it don't freeze, okay, that's okay, it'll be fine for that. But some of the additive stuff in it deteriorate. Now, in the skid loaders, we don't have it. Some of your equipment you might actually have filters on the water system, on the radiator system, that actually charge it up and re add these additives to it and stuff. But don't, you know, just because it looks good and it didn't freeze last week, it was cold. You know, it does need to be changed once in a while, flush out the radiators. Radiators almost totally today are what we call straight flow through radiators. If you get down and look at it, look into the back of this one. And this one here, if you look at the back, we have a regular radiator for your engine coolant, and below it, we got your oil cooler. Okay, the older ones, we had a radiator with an oil cooler in front of it. Okay, now it's separate. But the radiators are so straight flow through radiators. In other words, if you look through it, you can see straight through it. Okay. In the past, different times, they've, they've had what they call staggered core radiators. Okay. In a clean environment, the staggered core radiator will cool better than the straight core. But probably none of you operate a skid loader in a clean environment. You know, you've got a lot of chicken houses, turkey houses, 
uh, dairy barns, and you got a lot of dust and dirt and stuff. And a staggered corn radiator would plug up much quicker. And that's why everybody went to straight to blow through radiators. Cleaning the radiator, air is good, water's okay. Remember, if you wash a rotten radiator out, you blow, put water through it. Make sure it's dry before you start using that machine again. Because if that radiator's wet and got dampness to it, and you hit any dust or dirt, the minute that hits that water, it turns to mud, and it's going to start to plug up your radiator again. So make sure it's dry before you start using it again. Okay. Keep your radiators clean. Take care of that. Fuel filters, again, change them on a routine basis. Uh, cold mornings like this, if you got one that all of a sudden would start, a lot of them. I don't think this I don't see it, but a lot of them have inline filters from the tank to the injection before from the tank to the filters on the engine. Okay, they got a little inline filter. Some of those filters are clear. If you got a clear filter there and it doesn't start on one of those mornings down in the 20s, look at that filter and see if there's ice in it. Okay. It'll freeze before fluid, fuel can't flow and it won't start. Or if it starts, it'll shut off quickly. So if you got ice in there, then it's a good.